That's right, folks. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Dice Tower Christmas Buying Guide. This is a series of videos. Uh, all these games that we're talking about are available online. You can find them at funagaingames.com. Let's get to the video. Welcome to the Dice Tower, a video show all about board games. Today, we bring you part of our 2012 Christmas Buying Guide. Today, we'll take a look at five games. Our category is... Well, Merry Christmas, everyone! Today, we're talking about stocking stuffers. The things that you can put in a stocking. What do you I mean, I always put candy in my kids' stockings and... Uh, iTunes little, cards. iTunes cards. It's a I, nice one, you know? I, I always get, like, deodorant. I think it's like a... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Kind of boring stuff. Candy. Candy's a typical thing. So today we're going to talk about five games that you can put, hopefully, in a stocking. Maybe, maybe it needs to be a big stocking. We'll see. But games that you can get for someone small, inexpensive games. Here we go. Now these little reverse charade boxes are neat because there's actually a big game called Reverse Charades, a party game. These are expansions for it, but they actually have the rules in them. Yep. So you don't need the big box. You can just buy one of these little ones. And there's three of them. Holidays, which is mostly Christmas stuff. Then we have the uh, Sports Edition. And, and then Girls Night Out. That's my favorite. <laughs> The one I'm holding. You can mix them together yep. and do what you want. What reverse trades is is very simple. One one person sits down and they are the guesser. The rest of their team, which hopefully you have three or four people, get up and they act it out. It's that simple. And it sounds like that's just charades, but because you're acting things out, when you act out synchronized swimming together, when you act out giving birth, when you act out you know boxing or or a, a football huddle, those kinds of things can really be funny and not really funny. This is in the in the running in the top five funniest games I've ever seen, uh, just because of what goes on and your inhibitions go away when you're in a big group of people. It's easier to act when you Z is an actor, so mm -hmm. it's easier to act when there's people around you. Absolutely, doing that solitaire stuff is more nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's it's hard to go wrong with charades anyway. If you, I mean, you know already if you like charades or not. You should know already if either you or the people you're going to give this game to will like the game. But it's a great version of that. If you get everybody working together, you take away that fear of going up there and looking looking uh, fool foolish in front of people, and it gives everybody the chance to just guess on their own. You got that tension of oh, you got keep going, guys. I don't know, keep going. You know, it's it's a great twist on that. On that, you know, the original charades. Right, because it's reverse charades. Saboteur is a game that doesn't get a lot of love, although it has sold pretty well. Mm -hmm. And so I want to talk about Saboteur. In Saboteur, you are a group of dwarves, I think, I think yeah, so. building a, a network of pipes in the board and, and, or tunnels. Oh, you're digging. You're digging. Tunnels. And you're trying to get to a certain spot to find the treasure. That's it. And so you just play cards and put down the treasure. And But the problem is there's one or more saboteurs who is deliberately trying not to get to the treasure. Other than that, card play is very similar to another card game called Mealborns. Mm -hmm. in which you play bad cards and other people to, to shut them down. Hopefully you're playing a bad card in the saboteur. But there's a lot of interplay. Unless you're a saboteur, in which case you don't care. <laughs> and then you just laugh and say, yeah. I, I know, and, and lie to other people. Yeah. Um, it also feels like a tile laying game with the cards. So there's that sort of backstab, you know, back and forth thing. And then the other cards, it feels like a tile laying game. You have a certain distance from the beginning spot, which has a little ladder drawn on it, to where the three possible... Ends are only one of them is a real gold you're looking for, and so you play cards that look like you know a tile laying game. It's really simple, really light. Plays a crowd. I uh, what nine? I want to say. Yeah, I think so. And there's Something also something like that. There's uh, two versions of it: Saboteur and Saboteur Two. Yeah, Saboteur Two could act could act if I'm not mistaken as an expansion to the first one also. Uh, right. If you like that one, you got another stocking stuffer right there. There you go. Put one in the, his stocking and the other one in hers. Ha ha! Sabotage them both. Okay, teach you. I know this. This, is, this always leads me to like a plethora of jokes. I will teach you, teach you. Um, it's awful. Everybody, every I know. Everybody has that uncle or aunt 
who likes to play card games. They want to play hearts or spades till the cow comes yep. home. Yep. And that's fine. Those are great games. But this is a game that they would easily pick up on and play. Mm -hmm. It's what I would call a trick-taking game, but also kind of a ladder-climbing game yeah. because you have the possibility of playing multiple cards together. I can play two of the same card at the same time and what have you. Then everyone else has to play two, etc. Yes. And there's a few special rules, but the people who love this game, and they are out there, will swear that this is one of the most strategic, fun partner, and if you like partner games, partner yes. um, game out there. Yeah, it gets plenty of love, and you, I think you hit the nail right on the head. This is a great game for that Uncle relative. Fred. That relative who, not a friend, that relative who might not be into some of the fantasy-themed games, you know, something else. Uh, but if they play card games, this is probably going to be right up their alley. They're right. going to dig it, you know. Um, it's it's wrong to, I mean, it's hard to go wrong with this game. And it has a crowd. kind of, uh, you know, exotic flair because yeah. it's Ooh, like China. Ooh, so uh -huh. people like that too. But nice, good card game. Teach you. Here's a small little game called Construction Zone. This is a very simple game that uh, basically uh, you're playing cards in front of you, uh, or I'm sorry, you're collecting resources of different types and then playing those resources to build buildings. So you might need steel, you might need paperwork, you might need labor, um, and you play these cards to build different buildings and well, that's the game. But it's very simple, very fast, very fun, has nice artwork, fun cards, and the idea is simple. On your turn, draw two cards, you can trade those cards in for a different card, then you build a building if possible. If not, it goes to the next player. Boom, 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 I like it. Yeah, this sounds like a really neat game. I have not played it myself, but this is a great stocking stuff for it's quick. Um, it, it, it would be a good game for a gamer friend, actually, if they're not, uh, you know, uh, it's a relatively new game, if I'm not mistaken. Right, and this is one that if you get it for them, I guarantee you no one else on the list is getting it for them. Right. <laughs> you know? I, I know. This is one of those that they're going to they're gonna feel wowed that you got them something this neat and that nobody else would have thought of, you know. So definitely good for a gamer friend. Uh, good, you know, simple game if you want to play with uh, family also. Neat, neat game. Construction Zone. a weird game for a stocking stuffer, but it's an unusual one. It's small enough to fit in the stocking. Flower Fall. In this game, you are actually taking cards with flowers on, and you are actually dropping them onto a table, trying to make your flowers land near someone else's. Sounds silly, sounds stupid, yes and yes. But, it will draw a crowd. It's one of those games you can play around the kitchen table. Anywhere. People will come up. We, I played it dropping them off a balcony all the way down on the ground. <laughs> there you're just happy. I played it where you stood away from the table and threw them three feet at the table. Yeah. There's all kinds of things you can do. But the game actually goes up to seven players, which is a, a, a positive. Absolutely. The flower theme will appeal to some people. You know, because they like, it's flowers, hey. And so it appeals to everyone coming in. And it's just silly fun. It has that dexterity element of dropping the cards. Well, it's definitely not an off-putting theme. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and it will draw people in as you're playing. You know, people will pass by. You can pull it out of the party and you will get a crowd, even if you start with two of you. Because people will pull up to you and go, hey, what are you guys doing? Throwing cards at the table from way over here. You know, it'll, it'll gather a crowd. And it's a really fun, light, silly game. We just gave you the entire explanation for the game, basically, except scoring, and that's simple, too. So you should know already if this is something you're going to like, you know, or, or, or someone that you're going to give it to is going to like. Flower fall. Thanks so much for watching The Dice Tower. You can find all the games mentioned today at www.funagaingames.com. Fun Again Games has the world's best selection of board games. Get them now in time for Christmas. If you found this guide useful, pass it on, tell others, maybe even give it to someone as a guide for what to buy for you. Reviews of most of these games with more details can be found at Dicetower.com. Thanks for watching. How many days till Christmas? Oh, uh, who cares? See you in the next video. <laughs>